For a standard normal distribution, find P of Z greater than C equals 0 0.2401. So we need to review the notation here. P stands for probability, parentheses stands for the word of, so I'm reading the probability of Z being greater than some value C is equal to 0 0.2401. So what we should note is that this side denotes a probability, right? And probability and area are interchangeable when it comes to continuous probability distributions. So I know that the whole left side is an area, therefore the other side is also an area. Now, um, the greater than symbol tells me that this is a right area under the curve. So what we're looking for is some value C. Well, let's use a new color. This value C here, which is a z-score that we're going to mark and shade to the right of that and then figure out what that z-score is. We know the area to the right is 0 0.2401. Now the total area under any distribution curve is 1. So with a right area of 1, that means that my c value has to be somewhere over here. Just anywhere over here. You don't have to get it exactly placed correctly just to get a visual somewhere over here. How do I know that? Because if you divide right down the middle, you have 0.5 on each side since the normal curve is symmetric and the total area is 1. So if you divide it in half down the middle, you get two equal sides uh, with areas of 0.5. But here, we are not dividing it down the middle. We need a smaller area to the right. So that means that my boundary has to be over here so that my right area can be less than 0.5. Okay. Now it's this value right here, which is a z-score really. C is just a placeholder, and I want to find out what that is. I can see that it's positive because it's to the right of zero, so I know I can look up um, an area in the positive z-score table and work my way backward to find the z-score table on the outside of the table. The only thing is, um, if I look in the positive z-score table, the positive z-score table is set up with areas to the left. So what I need to do first here is subtract from 1, subtract the right area from 1 to get the left area. Once I have the left area, then I will be able to use that in the positive z-score table to look up the z-score in reverse. It's like a reverse lookup. It's called inverse. So 0.7599. is the area I want to look up in my positive z-score table. Okay, so I'm going to look in the body of the table for 0 0.2401, I think it was. Let's look again. 0.24, no, no, no. I want to look up 0 0.7599. That's the area to the left, to the left, excuse me, to the left of my z-score. 0.7599. Okay, so let's go and see what's closest inside the body of the table. Looks like this one's the closest right there, 0.7611. So working my way out, I get a z score of 0 0.71. So let's go ahead and mark that here and see if it makes sense. Now, I didn't get my original positioning of my boundary exactly right, but it's still within the ballpark of reasonable answers, just a little bit farther back than what I was thinking. 0.71, right? Okay, so this does seem like a reasonable answer to me. And then we can also use technology. So we can use inverse norm 
norm.inverse in Excel. Enter the left probability, 0.7599, with the mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1. Again, we know this because it is a standard normal distribution and always true for cumulative. Oh, I forgot. I don't need to say that with the inverse function. So you only have three arguments, the left area, the mean, and the standard deviation. And even though this answer um, is longer than the one we got out of the table, it rounds to the same answer, 0.71, which was our boundary that we got from the table. So 0.71 is what we got from both using technology and the z-score table.